panelists, but I have a great series of guests here. We have Emily and we have Sarah Kunstler, the daughters of William Kunstler, who was a friend of mine, not a great friend in the sense of uh, some of the people I knew. I was sort of like the second generation friend of his. I would go over to your home, sometimes over on Gay Street, tagging along with folks I know and knew uh, uh, during uh, the time your dad was uh, one of my, is and still is one of my great heroes. So you made a movie and I saw that movie and in a moment or two we're going to uh, play a clip from that movie and uh, or not really a clip but we're going to play the trailer. Great. Well, I don't want to give people any in, in, inside information about what happens in the movie although we're going to discuss a lot of that right now. I'm going to start with a question, and then I'm going to go off camera for a minute and work on something. But in the meantime, what I want you to guys to do, and just really at your own pace, is your show, do what you want with it, is I want you to tell me a little bit about why you made a movie about your father. Because I, can, I know that can be very difficult. I mean, that, that, that's an emotional ringing out of, of all kinds of things that happen in a life, especially a life as, as lived as large as your dad. So uh, why don't you go ahead yeah. with that, tell me a little bit about that. Uh, uh, how you came to do this movie and how you emotionally dealt with that? Well, you know, it was it was a difficult situation. I mean, a difficult choice for Sarah and I to make. We uh, were approaching, you know, our our mid to late twenties, and it was a period where we thought that we could actually begin to look back um, and investigate our our legacy and our influences. Um, and you know, I think Sarah and I acknowledged that we had sort of an unusual upbringing in the sense that we had an unusual political education. And we thought that it would be important to share that that experience and that education with with other people that could learn from it and take strength from it. Yeah, we. Um, it was around the time when the civil rights movement was starting to look like a bygone era. Um, it was forty. You know, we were passing all of these 40, 40th anniversaries. It was the fortieth anniversary of Brown versus the Board of Education, and it seemed like uh, as a nation we were really patting ourselves on the back for. Um, for having achieved civil rights and equality. You know, there were streets named after Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Uh, uh, George W. Bush was speaking at Coretta Scott King's funeral. And Emily and I were struck by the irony of that and how, how much work we still have to do as a nation uh, to, to fight racism. Mm -hmm. um, and, and at the time we started making this film, Sarah and I had been making short films, advocacy films for people in prison for, for about six or seven years. Um, so it seemed like, like a natural next step for us to, to, to go in and, and for the first time really think about the work that our father did um, with respect to the work that we had done. We never really made that connection before, before we got to that point. All right, I want to uh, now go to the next step because I'm so fascinated because I, I love the movie and, and I know that uh, you did not you didn't seem in the movie to really claim to be 100% supportive of some of the positions that your dad took. And I know a lot of them were quite controversial, uh, especially in the New York part of his career in the 90s. He definitely defended some folks. Uh, we got the, the fellow who, uh, who was accused and got off of uh, shooting Meyer Kahana. We have uh, uh, the Teflon Don, John Gotti, uh, numerous others who were not exactly of the high sort of the, the high political esteem that uh, your dad defended before that. Now, uh, I understand, you know, from my point of view, when you take a position against the government, it's not like I'm sort of against the government sometimes and I'm not against the government other times. You're either against them or you're not. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to really straddle that line because some of the people against the government are not against it for the same reasons yeah. that you might have yourself been against it for. So uh, how, did you, how did you deal with that in the movie? And how did you deal with that in your discussions? I mean, I think for, for Sarah and I, it was more about the choices that he made that put our family at risk, and, and less about uh, you know uh, the political correctness of the choices he was making. We weren't really thinking about it on that level. You know, mm -hmm. we were we were in our you know we were juveniles. You know, we weren't we didn't engage with him on that level. Sure. We didn't have that kind of dialogue. For us, it was just that it, it you know it created an unsafe space and an uncomfortable place to live. Mm -hmm. I think now that, you know, um, after making this film and now that we've entered adulthood, we have a much more nuanced view of that. You know, we definitely see, you know, at least uh, we, we understand his thinking more. Maybe we don't see complete consistency in the choices that he's making, but we don't see him as an entirely, we don't see it as like the early period and the late period. We don't see yeah. that, that division so much anymore. Right. Well, 
So tell me a little bit about that feeling of being unsafe, because I know you walk down and you would see uh, counter protesters, especially in the 90s when he took on like the, the fellow Nocer, mm -hmm. who was uh, accused of, of assassinating uh, Meyer Kahane. You had to walk a gauntlet of people who, uh, you know, Meyer Kahane was a violent person. Mm -hmm. So obviously, to take him on in a violent way is to then attract violent yeah. people. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you're being pulled into that as family members. and. When you're born into a family, you don't necessarily get to choose the situations you're born into. There's been worse, but you know that could be pretty scary to come out yeah. there as, as small, relatively young children and see, you know, a bunch of uh, very angry people saying, you know, we want to see you dead. You know, I'm am sorry to have you to see that you had to live through that and to grow up through that. Uh, how did you uh, how did you mentally deal with that? How did you deal with trying to go to your friend's house to go to a birthday party and have to walk a gauntlet of people where you need a police to protect you? Well, I mean, it, it's interesting. I have, um, I, I don't have exactly the same perspective on all of this as Emily mm -hmm. does. I don't, it's not just, I think the old time, the cases he took before we were bur born also probably created unsafe environments. It wasn't, um, and, and I'm sure you agree with me about that, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't that, uh, it wasn't just the unsafety of it, it was the unpopularity of it. And, you know, it was experiencing the, that unpopularity. So part of dealing with, dealing with it um, in our lifetime was dealing with the questions that our friends asked us and dealing with um, what were some of those questions that to me is fascinating what what were some of those questions well you know why why is your father representing this person and which person in particular did you get that kind of I'm just curious what because it seems like young kids seem to be sort of out of touch of that kind of thing no young Sometimes kids no? young kids parrot their parent what their parents tell them that you they sit you sit around I, I mean we grew up in a generation where everyone still watched the evening news mm -hmm. when they came home I mean mm -hmm. it's a different we're in different times now and people get their their right. media and, the, and their their information about the world differently but it was you know there was the, the five o'clock and the six o'clock news and, and people would come home and, and watch it and think about what happened that day and when our classmates came home from school and watched the news um, you know, they would watch it with their parents. Their parents would, would wonder or, or why was uh, William Kunstler representing the, you know, one of the young men accused of raping the Central Park jogger? Why was he representing Colin Ferguson, um, the, the Long Island Railroad, gun, Railroad gunman who, you know, mowed down a, a car of people on the Long Island Railroad? Why was he representing El Saeed Nocer? And these these questions would come to us at school, and they weren't questions that Emily and I knew how to deal with. And we didn't, we didn't, we didn't see the connection between this kind of work and the stories he told us about this past, representing um, heroes and you know being being a part of the glory of the civil rights movement. Now, Emily and Sarah Kunstler, I have a I'm up and ready to play the trailer from the movie, okay. and I want to give folks an opportunity to see the sure. trailer to see a little bit about what we're talking about. It. Great. Yeah. 